For today, we will take a look at validating the input and creating the agency matrix. Before that, let's see what is an agency matrix. So to keep it simple, an agency matrix is a n times n matrix, where n is the number of nodes in your graph. Its property is that, for what we work on, on oriented graphs, its value is 1 if you can go from node i to j and 0 if not, where i represents the line you're on and j the column. Now let's see an example. Suppose you have node 1 and 3 and they are connected. You can go from node 1 to 3, but since it doesn't matter from who you go from to, because it's an unoriented graph, you can go from 3 to 1 as well. This non-existent direction is represented with a simple line. So if we want to add that to our agency matrix, we simply say matrix at index 1 times the number of nodes plus 3 is equal to 1, and matrix at index 3 times number of nodes plus 1 is equal to 1. From that equality, we see that the matrix will always be symmetrical with the main diagonal. Above that, the main diagonal will always be 0, since you can't go from node A to node A, you're already there. Now that we have the basics, it's time to graph some graphs. Now, I firstly did a class where we will keep the column and line of the agency matrix. This one was used for referencing our input field with the matrix itself, in order to update data. Below that, after seeing that c -sharp really hates my constructors, I made a function for this class that assigns the row and column variables. And in the end, since the row and column are private members that can be accessed only by the class itself, I made some getters. Now that I think of it, I could have written a constructor using a setter, or basically using set key. After that, I needed to check the nodes before creating an agency matrix, so I made a new script that handles it. So what the validate method basically does, is it goes through the entire number of nodes and if it finds two nodes with the same components it ends the loop and returns false or not valid otherwise if it reached the end it returns true since we haven't found any nodes that are the same after that i declare some things our next button an agency matrix which we will see pretty soon and a second canvas which holds the ui for our matrix then, I made a function that manages clicks and implemented it for our next button. It basically works only if the input is valid. If it is, then it will destroy our current canvas, activate the second one that holds the matrix and enable the agency matrix. And at the end, I assign to the next button an unclick event listener. And now, the surprise of tonight, the agency matrix. Like any sane programmer, I declared at the top some variables. The first one holds the value of the agency matrix. It is a boolean type since it holds only zeros and ones. Plus, compared to int, it is four times smaller. The second one was deleted since I realized I haven't used it. On the third line, we have two public variables, which represent the offset on the x-axis and the y-axis of the input fields of the agency matrix. Below, we have an input field prefab, then a vector which holds the position of the starting node, which is at line 0, column 0 on the left corner. And since I didn't want to repeatedly get the number of nodes from the button manager script, I made a variable to hold it and its product by itself too. And now, the fun part, the start method. At the start, I kept the starting point x position because after putting a row of input boxes, we have to get back where we came from. And after that, the usual get the node product thing and initializing the matrix using the product. And now, initializing the input fields or boxes of the matrix as you wish. It starts with a double for loop. After that, it initializes at that position the value false or zero, meaning that you can go for a start from node i to node j. Then, it spawns an input field using what we specified before at the starting point with a rotation of 0, 0. Note that the starting point will change after using the offsets. Then I changed the name of the spawned object, changed its input value, made it a child of the UI, added an entry for it and setting its values. After that I got the rectangle transform anchored position and set it to the starting point. 
This way, after anchoring to the left upper corner of the screen, we get a good position. Then add it to the starting point, the offset on X, since we are moving along the line now, or the X axis. After ending the row, we restart the X to its initial value, then moving down by adding the offset on the Y axis. And to end this, I made a function which checks if the submitted matrix is valid. In the first loop, it checks to see if on the main diagonal there are any ones. On the second one, it goes below the main diagonal and it checks the symmetry of the graph. And since we checked only for false, if we haven't found anything, we return true. After all, we gotta stay true to ourselves.